morning y'all and welcome back to the kitchen. I'm going to revisit my very first video that I ever made was tomato pie. And I made it with puff pastry that day which was something that it was a change for me and I didn't enjoy it as much. So today I'm going to make tomato pie again and I'm going to use a bought pie crust. They come two to the package in the dairy section. and. Uh, I'm going to roll this out and get it in my pan in a little bit, but I'm going to bring y'all over here. I've already sliced a bunch of the tomatoes, but I'm going to slice one more and show you the process on that, and then we will layer on layer build our tomato pie and get it baked. I'm having some issues with being able to tilt my camera. It's like the screw is stripped out. So I just brought it up close just at booze block level, and I'm going to try to show y'all what I'm doing. I've already sliced about four medium-sized tomatoes and I've got them on a piece of paper towel and I'm going to slice this one last one and then I'm going to salt them and that pulls the moisture out and you want to let them sit there for a while and uh, let the salt draw the moisture out because you don't want your pie real soggy. So I'm going to finish this one and uh, get it over there and uh, salt them down and let them sit for quite a while, maybe 15 minutes or so. And then I'll take a paper towel and pat them real good to try to pat that moisture on out. And uh, then we'll get on with the rest of the how you make it. So at least, y'all, I can do the camera like this and show you as much as I can of what I'm doing. Be back in just a minute. While I have the tomatoes uh, with the salt on them, I'm going to show y'all how I get my pie crust ready. And we'll have it ready to use. Just unroll it. And what you want to do is take your rolling pin and roll this pie crust out. It's much larger as you can get it than what it is because you want some to flip back up over the top like a tart when you get done. So the best way to do this is now you want to roll it over your rolling pin. Just kind of roll it. <clears throat> then you can pick it up and put it over your plate. This is a pie plate that was a gift to me. It's an Emile Henri. It looks like Emily Henry. Sarlon Top cares them, but there is a website, EmileHenri.com. They're made in France. And, uh, I enjoy using it just because it was given to me. Okay, I don't guess I'll need that right now. Alright, I got my pie crust ready. So, I'm going to show you what else is going to go in the pie. I'm going to use green onions. And I like to sprinkle a little bit of cheese between the layers. Then I also, instead of just doing bacon by itself, which is what, you, what the recipe calls for, I browned my bacon and then I added a yellow onion and caramelized it. So I'm going to put caramelized onions, bacon, and green onions in that, in that layer. So y'all will see what we're doing here in a minute. But i got to finish with the tomatoes. And there's another little step on the tomatoes that we have to do. But uh, I'll bring y'all back here in just a jiffy and we'll... Okay, the Finish salt up. is pulling the liquid out. So here's what you want to do. Get you a paper towel and go along there. You press pretty hard and blot as much as that juice out as you can. You don't want to squeeze all the seed out because you do want some of that flavor left in there. But you don't want it real runny. Okay, once I get that done... I like to put a little onion and garlic powder on my tomatoes. Now this is not on the recipe card, so sometimes the recipe card lists the ingredients which you need to watch to learn what I do. I like to add flavor to every layer that I'm cooking, so onion and garlic on your tomatoes. We'll just do it on one side. I've already salted them, so I'm not going to salt them. But I am going <clears> to <throat> put some black pepper on them. Okay, 
<coughs> okay, this is the step that you don't want to forget. You want to dip each tomato in some flour before you start layering it into your pan because that helps absorb the water that's left in them and it doesn't, you don't end up with a soupy mess. So I just dunk them in the flour and then you layer them in the bottom of the pie shell. Just like that. A lot of people, when you say tomato pie, they go, ugh. But once they try it, they love it. It's different, but it sure is yummy. I told y'all before, I had never had it. And I was on, went to a sewing class in Arlington, Texas with a friend of mine, and she told me about it. And when we got home, <clears throat> my husband's folks were coming to visit. In fact, his brother got here right after I got home. And I got the stuff, and while they were here, I made my first tomato pie, and it was a hit. Okay, see, I've got one layer of that in. Now what you want to do is, you want to put some green onions. And normally you would put just bacon next, okay? But I'm going to add the bacon, some of the bacon and the caramelized onions, because I wanted that flavor. I like the caramelized onion flavor. And I put that on paper towel to get as much of the grease out as I could. You could also use a bag of the bacon bits that you can buy that's already done. But what I would do if I did them, I would still heat them a little bit on the stove and get rid of some of the grease that's in them. Sometimes they're just fatty. Now I'm going to add another little bit of onion and garlic powder on top of all of that on each layer. If you wanted basil, if you had some basil leaves, you could put them in now. Now we're going to repeat with another layer of tomatoes, just like I just got through doing. And I will turn the camera off and bring y'all back when I get the next layer done and I'm ready to put the meringue on the top. I'll show you how we make it. Okay, I've got one more um, bit of stuff to put on here to make this uh, the last layer. This is going to be three layers that I've I got out of that. I'm going to sprinkle my green onions around in there. And a little cheese here to kind of bind the inside together. I'm going to put this last layer of my bacon, which would be just crisp bacon if you don't want to do the caramelized onions with it. You just want enough bacon to do each layer. And I don't have amounts. <clears throat> this is a method, so y'all just have to do it your way. <clears throat> Today I almost feel like it's a crime to tear off a piece of paper towel and use it. Strange world we're in right now. Don't know when you get some more of anything. Okay, now I've got that ready. Now I need to take two cups of, and it, I usually use cheddar cheese, but today I'm just going to use this Mexican blend because that's what I've had open. So you need two cups of, of grated cheese and one cup of mayonnaise. And you want to use real mayonnaise. And this you're going to spread on the top just like a meringue on a pie. Because this is a tomato pie. This has become a favorite of my family on special occasions. They always think we got to have a tomato pie. And it's good warmed up. Some little restaurant that we went to in Pennsylvania, the name of the little place was the tomato pie. And on their menu, you could order a slice of tomato pie and a salad, and that was the meal. And I think that's fine because you're getting some of everything in here. All the groups, just about it. Food groups. Get in there, piece of cheese. Okay, now I want to sprinkle the top of this again with some onion and garlic powder that I didn't do yet. And I always sprinkle some in my meringue, too, and stir it up. It's all about flavor, and if you don't add it, it's not going to be there. Get all my flavoring stirred up in there.
the puff pastry tastes good, but on this, it just seemed to me like it puffed up too much more than I needed it to do, so. I reverted back to my my roots. Sometimes that's what's the best thing to do. Just do it like you know will work. Okay, you just want to put this on here. Bring it out to the edge, just like you would on an egg white meringue. This is good for like a ladies gathering, just to serve like they did at that little tea shop, uh, that little shop that we went to, the tomato pie. Just serve that in a salad and you've got something really yummy that everybody will like. But it sure goes good with chicken and dumplings and holidays too. Okay. And you can call it a tomato pie, tomato torque, because what you're going to do is take this ragged edge that you rolled out that was too big and just bring it up over the pie filling. Just like that. You see you've got a little tart looking thing and we're going to bake it at 350 for about 40 minutes and it'll be nice and brown and uh, yummy. Now I could have saved a little bit of green onion to snip right there in the middle. Put a little piece of uh, sun-dried tomato up here in the middle just to have something on it. So we'll put us a little few green onion blades here in the middle. And it's just entirely too grown up. It needs to be little like the rest of them. Okay, I'm going to get it in the oven and I will bring y'all back when it's done. Okay guys, can't you just almost smell that tomato pie? It smells amazing, but it is hotter than blazes. So I'm going to let it cool a little bit and I will uh, cut a piece and plate it up and I'll be back to show you what it's all about. Okay, y'all, I've cut my piece. See the layers inside the pie? Yeah, I'll show you the piece I've plated up. And here's the one I cut and I'm fixing the taste of. It's looking delicious. It's absolutely going to taste delicious. This is probably going to be one of the best ones I've ever made because I put the caramelized onions in it, and I love caramelized onions. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. There's really no way to describe a tomato pie. You just need to make one and try it. Now I showed you before that you can cut your pie crust to make little individual size ones. The same method, just make them smaller if you want to. But this is a great recipe and y'all need to try it and start having it on special occasions and then make an unspecial occasion a special occasion every now and then and have a tomato pie. That and a salad would be a wonderful meal. Now I'm going to add to this today and make us some fried chicken and smothered cabbage and probably some rice of some kind or a potato of some kind. But uh, it's a meal in itself. I hope y'all are all faring okay during this pandemic world that we live in. I hope you're trying to stay close to home as much as you can and take care of yourself. That's protecting yourself and protecting others. We're just kind of hibernating at home and probably eating way too much, but what else do you do? Y'all stay safe. Make some good meals. Stretch your groceries. You know, cook Cook a roast today and have roast beef sandwiches or a pot of soup using that or, you know, some hash or something the next day. You can use one main thing and stretch it to two or three meals. So put your thinking cap on and figure out what you can cook today that you can add to a meal and add to and make a meal for tomorrow and stretch your groceries because we really don't know how long this is going to last. We really don't know what is or is not going to be available. So be wise with what you have and make it last. Pray the Lord put his hand of protection on you and keep you safe. And by the way, use this for some good quality family time. And don't be yelling at those kids because you have to homeschool them. Have patience with them. Do your best to help them make a 100. If you get them all upset and in a tizzy, they're not going to do well. And you're not either. So have patience. 
with the little people and make their time off pleasant for them too. I have all these soap boxes I hop up and down on. Sometimes I get tired. Y'all might get tired of hearing me, but it's important. Make some sweet memories for your family during a time that's not very stable. The Lord bless y'all. Come back in a few days and we'll do something else.